Good evening aspirants, welcome to daily editorial analysis of Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 10th October 2024. Displayed here are the list of topics that we are going to discuss today. The first topic is about the myth about protein deficiency in India. The second topic is about the Asian countries. The third topic is about the food and fertilizer subsidies and issues with it. So these are the three important articles we are going to discuss in this editorial analysis. Now before we get into the discussion, I have an important announcement. Prelims pre test series batch 2 is going on. Interested aspirants can use the link given in the description. Now look at this article. This article addresses the common myth about protein deficiency in India. The article clarifies that for most Indians, the risk of protein deficiency is very low. The article talks about the data released by National Sample Survey. The protein requirements vary by age and activity level and a balanced diet with adequate energy intake naturally meets the protein requirement. The article also emphasizes that rationalizing protein intake based on biology and energy needs is crucial for maintaining the overall health. So this is what discussed in this article. In this context, let us discuss about the basics of proteins and their role in human body. Now proteins are the building blocks of our body. Proteins are composed of 20 different amino acids. Out of this 20 different amino acids, 9 are essential amino acids and 11 are non-essential amino acids. The essential amino acid means it must be obtained through the diet. The non-essential amino acid means it can be synthesized by our body itself. So, this is the difference between essential amino acid and non-essential amino acid. Proteins function based on their structure. They fold into specific shape that determines their function. So, if a protein is a folded structure, it means it is an enzyme and it allows to catalyze the reactions. So, enzymes are also made up of proteins and the proteins in the enzymes are folded structure. And another example is collagen. Collagen is found in the connective tissues and the proteins present in collagen are fibrous structure. So, depending on the structure of protein, they play various functions and roles in our body. The protein requirement should be in terms of the protein to energy ratio. For example, the food must provide an adequate protein to energy ratio, about 8 gram protein per 1000 kilocalories. For example, the food must provide an adequate ratio of protein to energy. There should be at least 8 gram protein per 1000 calories. This is for children and for adults, there should be 6 gram protein per 1000 calories. The body does not store protein as it does with fat and sugar. So, please note that the body does not store the proteins. They only store the fats and sugars. The protein to energy ratio requirement shifts with the age and while it remains high in growing children and it reduces in sedentary adults. The active people have higher protein needs and energy intake compared to inactive people. So, there is a variation in protein requirement based on age and also based on activities. So, this is about the daily protein requirement. Now, let us discuss about the role of proteins. Proteins are major components of bones, skin and connective tissues and they provide strength and flexibility. For example, the collagen provides elasticity of skin and the strength of tendons in bones. Then about enzymatic role, proteins act as enzymes facilitating the biochemical reactions such as digestion and energy production. For example, amylase which is an enzyme in saliva helps to break down the carbohydrates into simple sugars. So, proteins also act as enzymes. Proteins are also responsible for transporting molecules across the body. For example, hemoglobin transports oxygen from lungs to tissues. So, it is also made up of proteins. Proteins also play an important role in hormonal functions. Certain proteins serve as hormones which regulates the biological function. For example, insulin which is a hormone and it is made up of protein. So, it regulates the blood glucose levels by facilitating the uptake of glucose into cells. So, proteins also function as hormones, they also function as enzymes, they also help in transport and storage of materials inside the body. It also involves in immune system. The antibodies which are also made up of proteins are crucial for immune defense. For example, the immunoglobin antibodies are produced by the immune system. So, basically the antibodies are also made up of proteins. Proteins are also involved in energy source. When other energy sources such as carbohydrates and fats are depleted, proteins can be used to generate energy. For example, during prolonged fasting or starvation, the muscle proteins are broken down to provide energy and this process is called gluconogenesis. So, when there is not enough carbohydrates and fats for energy, the body utilizes the proteins in your muscle tissues. So, these are the important role of protein in the body. They act as enzymes, they act as hormones, they transport materials inside body, they act as immune system and they provide energy source. So, this is about the role of protein in human body. Now, what are balanced proteins? See, there are proteins that contain all essential 9 amino acids in sufficient quantities required by the human body. 
the biological value measures the efficiency with which protein is used in the body the proteins with all essential amino acids in adequate amounts are considered to be high biological value and these proteins are termed as balanced proteins so basically the term balanced protein means the proteins which have all essential amino acids here the essential amino acids we have already seen it means the proteins which should be taken through diet the non essential amino acid means those amino acids which can be synthesized by our own body so this is about the balanced proteins regarding the protein deficiency in india protein energy malnutrition can lead to diseases like kawashi yoker and marasmus especially in children so in this regard let us discuss some initiatives taken by government to address the protein deficiency the first one is poshan abhiyan it was launched in 2018 and poshan abhiyan aims to reduce the malnutrition including the protein deficiency among children it also covers the adolescent girls pregnant women and lactating mothers it focus on protein rich diets through local food sources like eggs pulses and milk the community based events to monitor the nutrition status and educate the importance of balanced diet including the adequate protein intake so this is about the poshan abhiyan under national nutrition mission next about integrated child development services that is icds it aims at improving the health and nutrition of children under 6 years and also for pregnant women and lactating mothers It aims to provide the key supplementary nutrition to children and women including the protein rich foods. So this is about integrated child development services. Then Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandana Yojana. It is a maternity benefit program aimed at improving the maternal health and also for the child health. It aims to provide cash incentives to pregnant women for better access to nutrition including the protein rich foods. Then National Protein Day. The National Protein Day was celebrated on February 27. This National Protein Day was launched to raise awareness about the importance of protein in our diets. The theme for 2023 National Protein Day is easy access to protein for all. It focuses on improving the protein accessibility especially for the marginalized section of society. So there should be a daily minimum requirement of protein intake in our diet. With this let us conclude the discussion and let us move on to the next news article. Now look at this article amid global conflicts and rising tensions Prime Minister Modi reaffirmed India's commitment to regional cooperation and he said this during Asian summit. While India's regional standing has improved, Asian faces challenges like internal disunity and managing China's assertiveness. And also India's trade deficit with the Asian is growing and there is internal policy issues so this hinders the economic integration of India with Asia. So this is what discussed in this news article. In this context let us discuss the significance of Asian India Asian cooperation. and what are the challenges for asia firstly about the significance of asia asia fosters economic growth and potential stability among its 10 member nations the 10 member nations were brunei cambodia indonesia laos malaysia myanmar philippines singapore thailand and vietnam so these are the 10 member nations of asia asia's combined gdp is over 4 trillion dollars so this makes it one of the fastest growing economic regions in global level the region is vital for global supply chains trade technological innovation geographically asian countries are located at the crossroads of major sea routes including south china sea which is a critical maritime passage for global trade and military strategy so the asian countries are also strategically important to india asian countries also play a crucial role in promoting peace security and regional cooperation in southeast asia the forums like asian regional forum and east asia summit are important things in this context So Asian countries also play an important role in the regional stability. Asian countries facilitate dialogue and cooperation between major powers of the region. For example, they cooperate with the US, China, Japan, India and Australia and they also help to balance the regional power dynamics. So multilateral diplomacy is one of the advantage of Asian countries. So regional stability, strategic importance, multilateral diplomacy are some of the important things and keywords to be noted here. Now looking at the India Asian relation India's look east policy and act east policy in 2014 boosted the trade security and cultural ties with asia the policies aimed to strengthen the regional cooperation in indo pacific region regarding economic cooperation the india's trade with asia reached 130 billion dollars and signing the asian india free trade agreement being a crucial framework in this regard however the trade deficit remains a major concern which stands at 44 billion So there is a growing trade deficit between India and Asia and it is a major concern for India. Now looking at the strategic cooperation India's membership in Quad which includes Australia, Japan, India and US and military ties with the Asian countries like Philippines 
demonstrate the strategic positioning in the region. India has invested in improving the physical and digital connectivity with Asian countries. For example, India Myanmar Thailand trilateral highway and colored and multimodal transit project in Myanmar. So, these are some of the examples with infrastructure connectivity projects with the Asian countries. India's Act East policy focuses on strengthening the cultural ties. It also aims to improve the educational exchanges and tourism with the Asian nations. So, India is working on connectivity projects, Act East policy and improving the trade gap between ASEAN and India. So, these are the important points regarding the significance of ASEAN for India. Now, let us see what are the challenges within ASEAN. First about the internal divisions. ASEAN is facing challenges in maintaining the unity especially due to Myanmar crisis. See, in Myanmar, the military junta's refusal to engage in dialogue has created the rift among Asian members. The US-China trade tensions and global shift towards protectionism are also affecting the Asian countries. The China's military assertiveness in South China Sea continues to strain the Asians' ability to manage maritime disputes. So, China's military assertiveness in South China Sea is also creating tensions for Asian country. The Asians' consensus-based decision-making can be slow and ineffective in addressing the urgent regional issues. So, there is a lack of unity between Asian members in addressing the strategic issues. So, these are the some of the challenges regarding Asian countries. Now, let us see some way forward points regarding this. India should focus on reducing the trade barriers and enhancing the investment in Asian region. India should continue expanding the defense ties and maritime security cooperation with the Asian nations in order to counterbalance China's dominance in Indo-Pacific region. So, there should be also strengthening of infrastructure and digital connectivity projects with the Asian nation. This will help India to integrate better with the Southeast Asian economies. India must also actively participate in ASEAN-led mechanism like East Asia Summit and ASEAN Regional Forum. This will foster dialogue and regional stability. So, India should take the regional leadership regarding the South Asian countries. It should also involve in connectivity enhancement and military cooperation. So, these are some of the way forward points regarding the Asian nation and their challenges. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. It discusses the inefficiency and economic irrationality of India's current food and fertilizer subsidy regime. The article highlights the key issues related to National Food Security Act and large-scale distribution of free and highly subsidized food to more than 800 million people. So, in this context, let us discuss about India's food subsidy schemes and fertilizer subsidy schemes. Before looking at the food subsidy schemes, let us discuss the National Food Security Act of 2013. This act aims to provide highly subsidized food grains to around two-third of India's population. So, the beneficiaries will receive the rice at 3 rupees per kilogram and they receive the wheat at 2 rupees per kilogram. The coarse grains are also distributed at 1 rupees per kilogram through PDS system that is public distribution system. Here the public distribution system operates across the country distributing the food grains at subsidized prices. They offer the food grains especially to the vulnerable groups. The schemes like Antodhya Anna Yojana and Below Poverty Line households are identified for the PDS system. Next about the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. It was launched during COVID-19 pandemic and it provides additional food grains to around 80 crore people under National Food Security Act. Now, let us see about the fertilizer subsidy. Firstly, the nutrient based subsidy scheme which is NBS scheme. The government provides subsidies to fertilizer manufacturers to make fertilizers like urea, phosphate and potash. And these fertilizers are available at affordable prices to farmers. So, the government provides subsidies to the fertilizer manufacturers. The prices are fixed by the government and the companies are compensated for the difference between the fixed price and the market cost. So, here under the NBS scheme, the subsidy is given to the fertilizer manufacturing companies and not to the farmers. So, the government compensates for the fertilizer companies so that the farmers can get the fertilizer at a fixed rate. The next one is Pradhan Mantri Kishan Samrudhi Kendra. It is launched recently to provide farmers with a one-stop solution for fertilizers. It also includes the soil health management. Urea is the heavily subsidized in order to ensure it remains affordable to all farmers. In order to avoid the overuse, the government launched the neem coated urea. So, this neem coated urea improves the nitrogen use efficiency. Now, talking about the food security challenges, there are significant insufficiencies in the food security of India. Diversion of food grains, ghost beneficiaries and incorrect identification of poor. So, around 25 to 30 percentage of food subsidies are lost due to these issues. 
Despite food subsidy schemes, malnutrition and stunting rates remains very high in India. The National Food Security Act current coverage includes 67% of population with outdated poverty estimates. So this leads to both exclusion errors and inclusion errors. Exclusion errors means the eligible peoples are not being covered under the scheme and inclusion errors means the people not needing the assistance are receiving it. So there is both problem of exclusion errors and inclusion errors under National Food Security Act. There is also huge dependence on rice and wheat. In terms of food security in India, there is a heavy reliance on cereals in the food basket. So this discourages the diversification towards more nutritious crops. For example, take pulses, coarse grains and vegetables are not properly included in the basket. The rising cost of food subsidies put immense pressure on the fiscal resources of government. In the financial year 2024 to 2025, the food subsidies alone are estimated to cost around 2 lakh crore for the government. So this is diverting the resources from other critical areas. So the food subsidies are a huge economic burden for the central government. Now let us see about the issues in food subsidy. The first one is overburdening of fiscal resources. See the expenditure of food subsidies has increased heavily especially with the schemes like Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. This adds to the fiscal deficit and also constrains the spending on development sectors like health, education and infrastructure. There is also leakages and corruption. Studies done by Various institutions suggest that significant portion of food subsidy, for example around 30 percentage, does not reach the intended beneficiaries. There is inefficiency in addressing the adequate needs and there is also corruption in the distribution system. So there are leakages and corruption which are also an issue in food security. The National Food Security Act covers approximately 800 million people. The initial goal of providing the food to the poor is overshadowed by its blanket coverage. So this makes it financially unsustainable in the long run. Many food subsidy schemes are seen as the populist measure which are aimed at gaining electoral support. They are not focusing on the long term food security. So this undermines the policy reforms regarding the food subsidy schemes. As we have seen earlier, the subsidy system predominantly delivers the cereals and they overlook the need for diversified diet. So these are some of the issues in food subsidy in India. Now let us see some way forward points. There should be a reform of public distribution system and targeting mechanism. The shift towards direct benefit transfer of food subsidies and allowing the beneficiaries to buy food from any source rather than delaying on government depots. So this would reduce the leakages and increase the efficiency. The next one is diversification of food basket. Encouraging the production and consumption of nutrient rich foods like pulses and coarse grains and also the millets through incentives can make the food subsidy system more nutrition sensitive. Next one is phasing out of blanket subsidies, gradually reducing the scope of blanket subsidies and focusing on only the most vulnerable segment of society. Here the blanket subsidy means the subsidies that are provided universally are very large portion of population. So there should be a specific targeting of those who actually need the subsidy. So phasing out of these blanket subsidies will increase the efficiency of food subsidy in India. Next about improving the fertilizer use efficiency. So regarding the fertilizer subsidy, we have to promote the balanced fertilizer use by encouraging the alternatives like organic farming and crop rotation. There are also support schemes in this regard like neem coated urea and soil health card scheme. Then about addressing the malnutrition. Integrating the food subsidy schemes with the other nutritional initiatives like Poshan Abhiyan can address the broader issues of malnutrition. Then about rationalizing the subsidy structures. We should prioritize cutting down the leakages and implementing structural reforms and this will prevent the political exploitation of subsidy programs. So adopting a performance link subsidies to ensure the effective use of fertilizers and food grains can be a good initiative in this regard. This would reduce the wastage and focus on the long term agricultural productivity. So this will in turn impact the food security. We should also learn from the international best practices. The global models like Brazil's Form a Zero program which has successfully combined the food security with the nutrition and agricultural development. It also led to the poverty elevation. So learning from the global models is also important for addressing the issues in food subsidy in India. With this let us conclude the discussion. Now we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankaraya's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.